guess who's back? We are ro- Ooh. Child! Is this the way this video is about to start? Cause, yeah, I'm not for this. Is it giving forehead? I think it is, you know? Is it giving forehead? <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If it's your very first time stopping by, I hope you enjoy this video. And if you're a returning subscriber, you already know you're a real one. I am so happy to have finally been able to make time to sit down and have this chat. I have missed this so much. I am here today to bring a different type of video. Um, one of my faves actually, which is coming here to share different things about my life experiences and to give advice and to inspire people which is the aim of this channel anyway i will be recording with natural light to ignore the light and you might see changes for the light and all of that i hope i still look cute though um yeah <laughs> anyway ignore the lights if you see that change and you might hear some cars passing by as well just ignore it yeah without further ado i am gonna get right into this video so in this video i'll be sharing 25 things i have learned in 25 years i turned 25 a couple months weeks ago yeah that's 25 brain a couple weeks ago and i thought it would be a good idea to share some of the lessons i have learned in life lessons on life lessons on relationships lessons on career lessons in friendship adulthood and everything in between so it's going to be a mix of everything and it's also shared in no particular order as well so i hope you sit back and grab your snacks enjoy the video share this video with someone who you'd also want to benefit from it as well so don't be greedy we don't do that here we don't get geek over here share the video with someone who you think is going to enjoy it and uh, without further ado i'm gonna get straight into the very first lesson the first thing is success looks different for everyone. Do not compare your journey with someone else's. We all have different assignments, different callings. So do not compare what you are supposed to do with what someone else is doing. I know this is tough, this is difficult, especially in this generation where we've got social media and we can see what every other person is up to. And it's very easy to fall into this trap and this bubble of, I am not where I'm supposed to be. Everyone's journey is different. It's just like our DNA is different, our fingerprints is different. Our journeys in life are different as well. You know, if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it would always feel like a failure. So don't judge your journey, your experiences, because someone else is in a different place than you are. And I'm saying this from experience, you know, the past three years of my life especially, I feel I was in a place where I didn't exactly love my life. I yeah, I'm beating this on camera. I didn't really love my life and I felt I would even jokingly tell people I don't wish anyone to leave my life. Looking back now, I wish I didn't say things like that and I wish I just embraced my journey and embraced my life. Was it difficult? Yes, it was. But that's my life and that was my story and my journey and part of my refining process. Everyone's journey is beautiful, you know. Embrace your life. The second thing I'll be sharing is to have a mission statement for your life and use that in making decisions. I believe I got this idea from one of my favorite YouTubers. My mentor actually also shared this with me, to have a mission statement for my life, an underlying statement and something that defines my life. It could be somewhat like a tagline, just like Nike has the tagline, just do it. So it could be aspire to inspire. It could be something that defines who you are or defines your life. And by doing that, it helps you to live a life of purpose. It helps you to make decisions on purpose, if you get what I mean. So I think it's really important. It's helped me as a person. It took me a long time to get there, I would be honest. And I've changed mine a couple of times. But I think I'm very happy with my current mission statements for life. The next one is obscurity is a blessing and probably the most vital season in everyone's life. Some of you are watching and saying, hmm, what's obscurity? Don't worry, I've got you. I'm going to define what that is. The dictionary defines it as the state of being unknown, inconspicuous or unimportant. 
So that phase before the limelight, as some Nigerians would say, that phase in your life before you blow. When you're still learning your craft, honing your craft, or becoming who you are, when not many people know you and you're able to make mistakes and it's not going to be as expensive. Some people eventually get to the spotlight, some people don't. But that season where we're growing, becoming, you know, building ourselves up, it's really, really important. Especially in this generation where everyone wants to be famous and everyone wants to be an influencer and everyone wants to put their life out there. Building your character before you build a platform. So when the platform comes, if it does come, your character would speak for you and your character will sustain you in that platform. You know, I listened to a very influential speaker, Haley Melinda, and she says, your gift will take you into the room or your character will sustain you there. And your character usually is built in that place of obscurity, you know, when no one's really watching you. But then when the spotlight comes on you now, it's a bit too late to start learning the things that we should have learned, especially when things like money and fame comes in the picture. It can cloud our character. So learning how to deal with that season of obscurity, it's not new. Even in the Bible, we heard about Jesus when he was 12 and we didn't hear about him again till he was 30, which was the start of his ministry. So technically speaking, you could say he went into a season of obscurity for about 18 years and during that period is where he built himself up and within three years he was able to complete his ministry and accomplish what no man has been able to accomplish on earth. So we could apply the same lesson to our lives. Building ourselves, growing ourselves and becoming men and women of good character in that season of obscurity. So when the platform comes, if it does come, we would have the character to sustain us and keep us in that position. My next point is we are where we are because of an action we took or did not take. We are responsible for our growth overall, especially as adults. You get to that point where you realize you cannot blame shift. You have to take responsibility for every action and decision you make in life. With that consciousness, you know if you don't move, your life is not going to move. People can wish you all the best, they can send you all the resources to help you, but if you don't decide to change your life, it wouldn't change. So we are responsible for our growth and this applies to a spiritual life, it applies to a career, it applies to our finances, it applies to our emotional intelligence, all parts of our lives. So if you don't want to grow, you wouldn't grow. And we live in a day and age where knowledge is abundant. It's everywhere. So we can't really make excuses for why we're not growing. So invest in your growth, invest in your future. No one can propel you into your destiny like you can propel yourself. My next point is confidence is everything. Literally, in this day and age we live in, confidence is everything. Someone could sit down here and be chatting rubbish to you, but because you're saying it confidently, anyone's going to buy into that idea. As someone who dealt with imposter syndrome a lot, I had to learn to overcome that quickly. No one is waiting for you to be doubting yourself. You're going to move on to the next person who is bringing the ideas confidently, especially in your career and in your work. If you're presenting an idea, even if you're not sure if it's right or wrong, you've got to own that thing and say it confidently. So be confident wherever you find yourself. You might be wrong, but that's okay. We don't know it all, we're gonna learn. But be confident. This next one, child, you cannot please everyone. Live for an audience of one. It will keep you sane. When I say an audience of one, I mean God. Live to please God only. It will keep you sane. People have the expectations of who you're supposed to be, of what you're supposed to be doing, of who they want you to be. You have your expectations as well. Leave for an audience of one. Leave to please God only. Now we're diving into relationship here now. This one's for my single people. Come closer and read my lips. Create a list of what you desire in a future partner and be that list. I'm not saying remain single for the rest of your life if you desire marriage, if that's what you want to know. But what I'm saying is we cannot expect to get what we don't attract. If that's what you're looking for, create a list of who you want in a future partner and become that list. Yes, you become that list first of all, and then we can attract that list. My next point is you don't know what you don't know. And that's it. You don't know what you don't know. So surround yourself with people who are where you want to be and be in an environment where people who you want to be like are. That way you can learn, mingle, socialize, network with them 
learn what you don't know because you don't know what you don't know so don't be scared to put yourself out there the next one which is probably one of my most important points on this list have a mentor and be a mentor if possible have a mentor for every part of your life that you're looking to grow have a mentor for life in general have a mentor for your relationships have a mentor for your career goals a work it could be a manager someone who's where you want to be it could be someone from a different company have a mentor for your finances just have a mentor start from somewhere it doesn't matter pick someone who you look up to it might be informal those actually end up being the best kind of relationships but have a mentor because that way you have someone you're accountable to and someone who's been where you want to be so you're able to follow the footsteps learn from your mistakes and get to your goal way faster i'm sharing this from experience having a mentor has literally saved my life and i mean that literally so have a mentor whatever part of your life that you can you should have a mentor and be a mentor you know as you build yourself up build others up as well it's a chain it's like a domino effect you help the next person the next person helps the next person and it just keeps on going that way this is one i hope everyone takes away from this video find yourself before you date someone learn to date yourself know what your non-negotiables are define what your standard is what do you like what don't you like what do you want in a partner travel around the world be social do things that you enjoy learn more about yourself before you date someone because if you happen to fall in the wrong relationship and that person knows your worth and you don't know your worth they're just going to keep hoping you don't find out your worth so learn to date yourself find out about yourself what you like what you don't like the kind of person you are you know your personality type how you react in situations how you deal with issues how you communicate so discover who you are before you date someone my next point is be open to corrections you know we don't know it all sometimes we get things wrong so being open to corrections when we get things wrong and being mature enough to admit when we are wrong my next point is sometimes it's what we say other times it's how we say it this i think is emotional intelligence as someone who has a personality type of being very blunt i have come to learn some of my words are very sharp and cut really deep so i've been very intentional about what i say how i say it even when i say it learning to know when to speak when not to speak what to say what not to say how to say it as well this is a really important life skill as human beings as social beings we always would interact with other people so learning how to converse in a way you don't get to hurt other people's feelings is really important so sometimes it's what we say other times it's how we say it and maybe i'd add sometimes it's also when we say it my next point is for my fellow christians oh god's favor will take you places you never dreamed of pursue god's favor pray for god's favor some of the things we struggle with in life some of the things that are very difficult for us to acquire but the favor of god instantly like this you're getting it so as someone who has experienced god's favor i know what i'm talking about seek first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all other things will be added unto you seek god's favor too because god's favor will take you places you have never ever ever dreamed of next don't wait for the opportunity sometimes you have to create it we can't wait for things to magically fall into places all the time sometimes we have to be the ones to go out there and create the opportunity the bible speaks about the violent take it by force sometimes we have to take it by force things will not always magically align for our sake sometimes we have to be very proactive grab the opportunity be the first to raise your hands where people are asking for volunteers be bold enough to step forward and put yourself out there now this one's for my ladies learn how to be feminine i'm saying this and i'm saying this to myself as well because of my lifestyle and my career choice i suppose i found myself around a lot of masculine energy and i slowly began to take that into my personal life as well so what i was finding is i would not let people do things for me I'm a strong, independent woman. I can do things for myself. I don't need your help. No, I got this. Thank you. You can stay in your lane. I can do me. And trying to show you yeah, I'm strong. I can do this. 
it's not every day you find you're strong you know sometimes be feminine allow the men take the lead in certain things learn when to step back learn when to step forward stepping back doesn't make you less of a strong or independent woman leaning to your feminine side which is very nurturing calm soft-spoken gentle i know we all have different personalities but sometimes be that person yeah be more feminine with the world we live in today everyone's trying to be the other person men are trying to be like women women are trying to be like men god created you as a woman be a woman simple <laughs> now this one is for my christians learn how to speak in tongues learn how to speak in tongues and deal with spiritual battles speaking in tongues will fight battles that your English or your language would not be able to fight even if you try to fight those battles for decades. Our power lies in our ability to connect with the spiritual realm, to connect with the Holy Spirit. Speak in tongues. That is where your power as a Christian lies. I know this is probably a hot take or an unpopular opinion, but as a Christian, you should aim to speak in tongues learn to speak in tongues the world we see is run by the spiritual world if you don't fight your battles in the spirit it's not going to work in the physical world so learn to speak in tongues not just for fighting battles it also helps to edify you as a christian it helps with your growth when i started speaking in tongues is when i realized the shift in my walk with god and significantly experienced growth in my faith and it's our natural language because fundamentally we're all spirits that live in a body and have a soul. I thought to bring this one back again for those who haven't watched my other video that speaks about it. My identity is in who God says I am alone. Nothing else creates my identity. My work does not define who I am. My parents do not define who I am. My partner does not define who I am. My friends do not define who I am. My boss does not define who I am. My failures do not define who I am. My successes do not define who I am. God defines who I am, period. My next point is one I wish I learned earlier. I wish someone rang this into my ears earlier. Read, 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 read. Read the Bible so that you gain wisdom. Read books that open up your mind. Read biographies and be inspired by people's lives read 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 there is a wealth of knowledge out there and there's so much we can learn we don't know everything so there's so much more for us to learn and to discover as well so read 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 and read the last time i recorded this video that space was empty and now it's filled up with books because now you're gonna find me reading i used to tell myself i'm not into books i don't like reading books it's not my thing now is my thing. Make it your thing. It has to be your thing because that's the only way you can learn and grow. Audiobook is your thing as well. Listen to that audiobook. Listen to that podcast. Or read books still. Try to read books. Just at least try, you know. Just try. Because the things you learn from reading, it also helps you to learn how to engage your brain, exercise your brain, and think. From reading, we get inspired. We change our lives. We get big ideas, so read, 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 and read. My next point is fast. It literally changed my life. I did not say starve, I said fast. Learn what it means to fast, how to fast correctly. I've been fasting for years. It was not until the start of this year, I believe, I truly understood what it meant to fast. So fast learn how to fast read books on fasting when i say fast i'm speaking of the spiritual fasting that's christian fasting not fasting for weight loss you can do that if that's part of your fitness goal but i'm speaking about spiritual fasting learn how to fast and how to live a fasted life i did this fast at the start of this year and it transformed my life i am still living in the blessings i am still seeing the testimonies manifest from that fast maybe i'll do a video about that in the future i really hope i get to put that video out there because i believe it's gonna encourage a lot of people but in the meantime learn how to fast and how to live a fasted life as a christian my next point is form healthy habits 
from a young age, your older self will thank you. If you envision who you want to be in the future and your current habits do not match up to who that person is, now is the time to take a step back, recalculate some of the habits, go back to the drawing board, change a few things because your future self will thank you. There are some habits in my life today I am beating myself about. Girl, where did you pick this thing off from? How can you cut this from your life? Because I wish someone told me sooner. I wish I cut this from my life sooner. At the same time, there are some habits I have that I'm like, I did myself a solid. I did myself a favor by practicing these habits from a young age because it's helped to build me up. So build good habits from a young age because your older self will thank you. My next point is dare to dream. It's free, literally. Don't hold yourself back. Where do you see yourself in the future? What do you want your life to be? Where do you want your career to be? Where do you want your family to be? Where do you want your goals to be? Dare to dream. I'm learning to dream and dream bigger and dream wider and create goals that even scare me. Not all of them might come to pass, but that's okay. Still dream and keep dreaming. So dare to dream, dare to change your life. My next point is something I got from my mentor. The true wealth we possess in life are the people in our lives. Basically saying, your network is your net worth. Build relationships that will stand the test of time. Build friendships that will carry you throughout this lifetime. Those relationships that feed into you, that build you up as a person. Because no man is an island and we would always depend on other people to help us achieve our goals, our dreams, or purpose on earth. So find those people that align with your purpose and build a solid relationship with them. Like I said again, the true wealth we possess are the people in our lives. This leads me to my next point, which is to build a tribe of people who inspire you. Build a network of people who inspire you and surround yourself with them. Find your tribe, your friends, your family members, your co-workers, your church members, wherever you find them, find a tribe of people who inspire you and stay connected with them. It takes a village to raise a child. It takes a village to achieve anything in life these days. So find your own village or build it if you don't have one. My next point is the higher your position, the lower you go in service. Basically saying, be a servant and be willing to serve always. It keeps us humble. So for instance, you wouldn't normally see a CEO do some of the basic jobs like cleaning in a company. But what I'm saying is doing that, maybe not literally, but the higher you go in life, the lower you go in your service. Be willing to serve people, especially as a leader. Be open to serve people. The higher you go, don't think you're farther away from them. And now because you're all the way up there, you can't relate with them, you can't sit with them. You can't have a conversation with them but no the higher you go in life the lower you go in your service be more willing to serve people whatever that looks like in your sphere of influence or in your life jesus christ was a servant he washed the feet of his disciples and he set the example for us to have that spirit of serving people that heart of service so the higher you go in your position the lower you go in your service or let me say the deeper you go in your service yeah, let's call it that, the deeper you go in your service. Now, my last, certainly is not the list, but it is on the list. You can decide to start your life afresh at any point. You're not too young to start afresh. You're not too old to start afresh. Whenever you decide to start your life afresh and turn a new leaf, it's not too late. Sometimes we put certain limitations on ourselves. We're too young to do this, we're too old to do this. Those are all lies. Those are all false. You can decide to start your life afresh whenever you want to. Looking back at my life, there are so many things that I wish I did when I was younger. So, so many things. So one of my greatest encouragements to young people now is to chase any dream you have with a passion. Chase any desire you have. Chase it. You're not too young to do it because the world is not waiting for us. The world is moving. We're also waiting for our dreams to come true. Our dreams are waiting for us to come true as well. So come through, be bold, start your life afresh from wherever you are. You don't have to wait for a new month. You don't have to wait for a new year. You don't have to wait till your birthday. It's something I'm learning as well. Sometimes mentally our brain thinks Monday, new week, or we save the reset for the new week, new month, birthday. If you want to change your life on a Wednesday, change your life on a Wednesday. Don't wait for a Monday or don't wait for the next year or your birthday. Anytime you decide you want to change your life, 
you certainly can thank you so much for watching this video i hope you were able to take something away from the video these were loads of points to go through and i have many more to share but i just leave this ones for this video so let me know if you want me to do a part two of this video also comment down below the kinds of videos you like to see on this channel because i'm hoping to do some rebranding and bring some new content to share your content ideas hope you enjoy the rest of your day get back to what you're doing if you're about to start your day have a great day if you're finishing your day have a good night and i hope to see you in my next video now you know i love having fun with you guys after my video i think i'm coming back on youtube honestly i hope i stay this time around i'll be done in five minutes thank you that's my very loving and considerate sister who cares about my video and has paused her life for this video i miss my bloopers i can't even see that's the thing you know lord heal my eyes let's get some thumbnail because we have to get thumbnail to be honest, this is one of the reasons why I have been away from YouTube. I'm not going to put the entire blame on this, but this has been one of the main reasons. By the way, if you leave in Aberdeen, I'm going to plug you in the rear. Nita the stylist. Yeah. She deserves all her flowers. Follow her on Instagram. Book her for your hair appointments. She did this. Yeah. You could be next. You could be next. Like this video. Share it with someone. Leave a comment down below. Bye. Thank you.